Good evening, everyone, and a happy new year. Thank you so much for joining us and spending some time with us this evening, and welcome back. My name is Jamie Woody. I'm the Vice President for Student Life, and I'll be serving as the moderator tonight. I'm joined by two of my esteemed colleagues and panelists. Elisa Gonder is our Dean of the Faculty and Professor of Political Science, and Laura Scandera Trombley is with us as well. Dr. Trombley will share some opening comments with us, and then I want to remind you of the Q&A box down in the bottom of your screen. Feel free to populate that, and we will get to your questions as quickly as possible. President Trombley. Good evening and welcome. It's good to have all of you here and we are now poised and ready to begin the spring semester of our 180th year. I have to say this has been the most unusual year that I've ever spent in higher education without question. However, nothing really prepared me for waking up, looking out of the window and seeing three inches of snow. <laughs> this certainly was something I did not expect. And as I walked across campus with my dog, I saw that someone had built some snowmen. So it's a good way to start what is going to be a very interesting spring semester. So I had the opportunity to talk with a lot of your students this past semester, and I always start with the same questions. How are you? How do you like your classes? Do you have a faculty member that you have met? that you like, have you been involved? And on every level, I had students tell me the truth, tell me that they had found their friend group, that they were happy here, and that they were glad that they came to Southwestern. And they were particularly glad to be part of our community. And so I'm a little bit envious. I won't be teaching this semester, but I will be teaching in the fall. And I'm very, very much looking forward to that. We have done, of course, a great deal of planning over the course of the break. And we feel quite confident that we can have a very safe and healthy environment for all of our community members, your students, our faculty, and our staff. And after quite a bit of conversation, we now will be doing something else for the first time. And that is running all of our athletics competition in one semester, something that we have never done before. Fall, winter, and spring will be happening here simultaneously here on the Southwestern campus. And in that regard, I must say that our coaches have spent so much time working with not just their athletes, but also their colleagues at other institutions, creating shortened schedules of competition that have made, been made all the more difficult because we have layered on top of that, not just the very rigorous testing that the NCAA is requiring, she but also me, but I can't get in. And here she is. Our own testing that we are doing <laughs> in addition to the testing that our conference requires. And so we actually have two layers for all of our students. We are at this point in time not asking that we have members of the family or friends attending any of our competitive events, particularly our indoor events. And in the audience at this point, we are only anticipating uh, Glenn Schwab, who is our director of athletics, and myself. So the two of us will form your students cheering section, indeed, if they are going to be competing this spring. We are, though, looking at possibly making room for parents to come and attend on outdoor events that would be taking place off campus. And this, of course, would include football. This is something that's currently under consideration. This is going to be, I think, a very long semester in some ways, even though we're starting a week late. We will not be having spring break this year. Instead, we have scheduled some days throughout the semester so students have an opportunity to rest and catch up. And I know that we also have now planned even more kinds of co-curricular activities than we had in the fall. And I just want to say my thanks to, in particular, Student Life, because they have not missed a step in terms of the planning that they're doing to make sure that students are comfortable, that they have adequate housing, that they have 
meals, that they have all of the arrangements that they need. They are going to be working with all of our students to make sure that they are comfortable and that they also have enough time to have safe, socially, physically distanced get togethers and that they also are going to have a great deal of the wonderful programming that we offer here. Also, faculty are prepared to come and offer classes on campus due to the increased rates that we are seeing in terms of positivity in Texas and in the Austin area. The way that we are going to be starting this week coming is that faculty are going to be uh, determining whether they will be teaching the first week in class or whether the first week in their class will be online. My expectation is that the majority of our faculty will choose to be on campus and in class with their students. But we want to make sure that safety is paramount, that everyone is comfortable attending, that we have safe and very, very careful protocols in place so we can all do exactly as we did during the fall semester, start together and end together and offer what I consider to be the finest education that one can experience here in our beautiful liberal arts university. And so with that, I'd like to just turn it back to our moderator, Jamie Woody, and we can go and start taking some of your questions. Thank you very much, President Trombley. And I have to admit, y'all are slow with the question input so far. We only have one question, but we will do our best to get to that one question. And the question is, how will Rush for Social and other fraternities be handled this semester? Much like everything else, we are approaching all of our programming with awareness of what's happening, not only in the local area, but nationally, and doing everything we can to mitigate risk. So under that, premise, we are moving all of the Russian recruitment activities for men and women to virtual. The national governing body for the women indicated that that would be the case several months ago, so we've had time to work on it. The men did not get that leadership from their national organization. However, Southwestern has made the decision to move to totally virtual. So we will be using online platforms much like this. It'll be different, but we are certainly going to make the best out of it that we can and create a wonderful opportunity for the intake process for men and women. Our next question has arrived. Dean Gonder, are teachers still allowed to assign work on reading days? So uh, as you know, assignments are um, sort of ongoing in classes. So I, uh, I do not think that assignments would be due on a reading day, um, but it is likely that those reading days will be used for students to uh, work on uh, readings or problem sets or papers for upcoming courses. So it very well could be that students have assignments due the day after a reading day, which means they'll have to spend some of the reading day uh, doing work. We, we are calling them reading days because they are this, uh, uh, it's, it's not a, a vacation, there's no class at that time. Uh, I do not think assignments will be due on those days as there will not be class. Uh, but, but I do think that uh, students could find themselves uh, needing to use those days to catch up on work. Thank you very much. My son will be living in the dorm for the first time this semester. Will there be social activities, icebreakers, and whatnot this weekend so he can meet people? Absolutely. We have the RAs who are resident assistants. They are peer educators. They came to campus today and they will be in training tomorrow. We're talking with them about all of our approaches to programming and ice breaking and gathering and such, and they will be good to go by end of day tomorrow. So they will have opportunities to gather over the weekend. This is a long weekend, so we also didn't require people to show up at a certain time. So there'll be an ebb and flow in terms of population in the hall, but the RAs are incredibly well versed at not only creating opportunities virtually for students to engage, but also in person. So there will be chances to build networks and community, sometimes in a slightly different way, but it will happen nonetheless. Thank you for your question. 
uh, President Trombley, what safety measures are in place for students during the inauguration? That's actually a topic that I was on the phone uh, with the other presidents who are part of the Associated Colleges of the South just last night. And we all discussed the plans that we are in the process of making. And we always start here at Southwestern with education. And we want to make sure that all of our students first understand and to try to the best of their ability, watch the inauguration because this is one of the most important ones in our history. And as we develop plans to make sure that all of our students not only are informed and who are on campus and off campus, we're going to share the kinds of protocols that we are going to have in place by the end of this week with all of our students as well as with all of you parents. We are anticipating because of where we are located in Georgetown that things will be quiet here. However, as anyone who has looked at any of the media outlets uh, in recent days, there's quite a bit of activity. There's a very high level of concern and we are relatively close to our state's capital. So we will be looking at our plans, we will be communicating with you, and we anticipate that things on campus will be quiet and contained. Here, here to that. Last semester I heard about potentially being allowed to go visit our friends and other residence halls, going into friends' rooms, et cetera. Is this changing? Well, I'm glad we got this question out of the way right away. Unfortunately, because things are accelerating at a rapid rate in Williamson County, in the United States in general. We are going to stick with all of our protocols that we had in place last semester. We will monitor what's happening and then we will hopefully make adjustments when things settle down. But at this point in time, we firmly believe that our approach last semester worked and kept our positivity rate incredibly manageable. So we are going to approach the semester with that same philosophy. And again, trust me, we want you to be able to visit each other. So we're gonna moderate, uh, we're going to monitor that very closely and adjust as appropriate. One thing that we are doing though, is we're talking with the RAs. I, they did a fantastic job. I am so glad I was not walking in RA shoes last semester because the job was incredibly challenging. But we are talking with them about being a bit more flexible than I think they were. I think they took their job very seriously. And if someone even approached the threshold of someone's door, I think they were having conversations. So we're becoming a little bit more uh, aware that we need to let students have conversations. So if you approach a threshold, that's gonna be okay. We just don't want you crossing that threshold and going into the room. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation as we all work to have a successful in-person semester. Dean Gonder, do you anticipate study abroad programs being available this summer and or next year? And how should my student look into that? Yes, so, um, so we are currently uh, accepting uh, students' uh, applications who are interested um, for, for the study abroad programs that we run in the summer. Uh, I believe that there are three of those that are SU programs, two or three. Um, and uh, we are hopeful uh, that we will be able to run uh, both summer study abroad programs and uh, programs, of course, next year. We did cancel our London program for next year, so we will not be um, having that um, Southwestern program. Uh, you you or, uh, or your student should um, uh, reach out to um, Monia Limery in the uh, Office of Study Abroad uh, and they can help. And the important question to ask is sort of how much do I need to commit and what is the drop dead date um, based on uh, uh, for a deposit? Um, and that is when you have sort of committed uh, to, to doing that and could potentially um, have, uh, you know, have to change plans with a deposit. But we are hopeful uh, that this summer we will be able to run programs and we'll probably be making that call about mid-semester. Thank you very much. What if one roommate arrives in time for intake testing on Saturday, but the other roommate does not? 
So we have a plan A and a plan B, and I think we even have a plan C. So we are providing through a vendor intake testing on Saturday. We've advertised that to the students. It's from one to five in the afternoon. The pre-arrival test is still required. So your student should have submitted or is submitting right now a, an, a test that they, they took within seven-ish days of their arrival on campus. So then if they get here on Saturday, of course, they'll participate in the in-person testing that we have available. If they by chance cannot arrive on Saturday, that is okay. Saturday is preferred because this vendor can get people through in under 30 seconds. They started testing today and we're really whipping people right through. So 30 seconds is amazing. So Saturday is preferred, but if not, we will have tests that students can take where it's the, the test that we've been doing for surveillance, where it's the individually done swab each no, nasal cavity three times, and then those test results are shipped off to a different vendor. So that's our stopgap. But we also then have that same Saturday vendor coming back every Wednesday. So depending on when the student arrives, again, Saturday is our preference. If it is on Sunday, perhaps we'll have them do this um, individual test that they'll um, activate themselves. And then if not, we'll get them tested on Wednesday. So a couple of different plans of action, depending on what their arrival date is. Are there any social programs for students that are attending the semester remotely? Yes, there are. And I want to be frank in that I don't think we did a superb job with connecting the remote students last semester. So that has risen very high on our list of priorities and we are going to do a much better job this semester. We have two different offices that will be reaching out to those students. One is our Mosaic and Residential Experience office and second is the housing office. So every RA is going to make sure they are connecting with the remote students and then our Mosaic ambassadors are going to be connecting with them also. So two different approaches to connecting the student. They will be talking about opportunities to engage virtually, things that are going on, create group chats and whatnot. So yes, there will be ways to connect and it'll be much better than it was last semester if you all experienced that. Present Trombley, very significant question. Has all of the snow melted in Georgetown? <laughs> yes, it melted before I, I had time to find my snow boots. Uh, but I did get to see my year old puppy experience snow for the first time. And uh, she wasn't quite sure whether she should be afraid of it or eat it. And so she finally decided that she would just uh, find some convenient snow and mud and roll in it. Uh, so it, it really was, I'm sure as you all know, we have a stunningly beautiful campus. And in the snow, it is just unbelievably beautiful. And in fact, uh, my son and I went out and took a few pictures and I'm going to be sending my welcome to the spring semester at Southwestern letter to all of you tomorrow. And I'm including a couple of photographs that we took as well as a great deal of information regarding our testing protocols and an uplink to an absolutely marvelous panel that we had this morning featuring Peter Hotez, who is one of the leading experts when it comes to vaccine development, as well as, in particular, COVID. And he is uh, a brilliant faculty member at Baylor Medicine and someone who is a good friend of Southwestern University. And three members of our faculty moderate, moderated the panel. And it was educational, enlightening, concerning, but it also gave us a great deal of really important information that we all need to have as we work our way through what I hope is the next and final few months of the pandemic. So I'll have an uplink in my letter to all of you and I really recommend that you watch the panel. It uh, is extremely interesting. Thank you very much. And I must admit, eight-year-old Jamie came right out when that snow was falling. I had the best time. It was just the best Sunday I have had in a long time. I hope you all got to enjoy it as well. How can first-year students expand their friend group this semester? Excellent question. That is a priority for us as well. We want to make sure that students not only feel a connection to Southwestern, but also to their residential area and to their peers. So we have a lot of programming planned that will be some in-person and some virtual as well. 
we have created what we're calling mosaic meetups. So students can come together and have this cohort of which they can be a part and walk through this journey together and find ways to connect, hopefully in ways that are meaningful. So if you want more information, please reach out to me. I'm happy to make sure you get connected and uh, make sure the students feel connected as well. Follow-up question. We were told last semester there'd be activities in the dorms. My son told me that there weren't any. Can we expect those this semester or will things be mostly virtual? I, I want to again acknowledge that I am sure there are ways that we could have been doing a better job to make students feel connected. We are walking that fine line of in-person connection versus virtual. We actually found that students were not necessarily that interested in interested in gathering in person in their residential areas, but they might be more interested in gathering in a large classroom or whatnot. So we're really trying to keep our finger on the pulse of what the students want, where they feel comfortable. We'll be conducting a needs assessment for all students who are living on campus very early this semester to ask them, what kind of programming do you want? Where do you want the programming to take place? So we can stop trying to assume and stop trying to second guess and actually program for the students when they want it and where they want it. So those are some ways that hopefully this semester will feel different than last semester and hopefully in a better way as well. President Tromley, will there be testing available on campus again this semester? Yes, there will. Uh, there is still testing available on campus and I've been asked now multiple times about what will we do assuming that a vaccine becomes available. And I actually have quite a bit of information about that included in my letter that you'll be receiving tomorrow. And right now, uh, Texas is in 1A and 1B. Teachers and college students are not included in those two groups unless they are over 65 years of age and or have underlying health issues. And we do not have any word on when we might be expecting vaccines being available for faculty, staff, and for students. But as soon as we do, once we find that information and once the vaccines become available, uh, we will absolutely make, uh, we will put protocols in place. We will identify locations where the vaccine is being offered and we will encourage everyone to go and to get vaccinated as quickly as they can. However, uh, based on what I was also hearing uh, this morning from our guest speaker, we should not expect vaccines to be available really for college age students until the summer. However, we are feeling pretty confident, I think at this point, that everyone will be able to be vaccinated by August at the latest. Thank you very much for that. And just a little bit more on the on-campus testing. We've talked about the testing that will be done on Saturday for intake. Then we are continuing our randomized surveillance testing every week thereafter. So on Wednesdays, we will be inviting students to participate, students, faculty, and staff to participate in on-campus randomized surveillance testing. And with this new vendor, we are able to test up to 600 people every week. We are estimating that our students will be tested once a month at least. And so we are really excited about this new relationship with this vendor and rolling out this new testing protocol. Dean Gonder, will office hours still be remote this semester? How should my student work with their faculty members if they're struggling? We will continue to have office hours uh, remotely uh, this semester. Um, this is mainly um, so that our facilities staff do not have to clean the faculty office areas. They're, they're increasing their cleaning in other areas. Uh, faculty who are interested can meet with students socially distanced outside, and some faculty members did that um, uh, last semester. So if, if that's something a student might prefer, you could encourage them um, to ask that question. Um, I would encourage uh, the student to ask the professor the first day of class, what is the best way to set up appointments for office hours? Uh, would you like me to reach out via email? Uh, can I stay and ask after class and make an appointment? Um, try to figure out the best way 
or ask each professor the best way to communicate and set up appointments. Our professors are available. Um, and so I, I, I think that email has always been the way that I have set up appointments with students, uh, e either email or after class. Um, and I think that really is the, the best approach. But asking that question on the first day of class would benefit um, all students in the class. Dean Gonder, you better take a sip of water because we're about to have a run on questions for the Dean of the Faculty. If my student needs help with academic advising, how should they do that this semester? Yes, so um, all students are assigned an advisor. Um, so uh, working with their advisor is the first step. Uh, if that advisor is not a good fit, uh, students can um, uh, approach other professors that they've had. If they've declared a major, uh, it's common to, to change advisors. But the advisor can help connect the student to other resources. Um, so our Center for Academic Success is a great resource that could connect the student with peer mentors or tutors if needed. Um, uh, it, it, in the semester, but the, the academic advisor is the, the best starting point to get connected to resources for, of support for your student. My student was surprised at how difficult the academics were this past semester and struggled academic, academically for the first time in her life. What advice can you give her? Yes, I think that is a very common experience. And I think that's the first thing I would tell your student um, that many of our students are, are very surprised. The transition from high school to college is not easy. Um, I often uh, tell my first year students in comparative politics, it, it's similar to the first time you took an advanced placement course in, in high school. And if, if it were the same as high school, then, then why, why are, 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 you know, then wouldn't you be disappointed? Uh, but that definitely, we definitely have a lot of resources available to support students. So I think one of the biggest adjustments is um, learning how, back to the previous question, really engage with the professor and utilize office hours. So faculty here really want to promote student success. So reaching out to faculty and going to office hours, asking questions about assignments, uh, and if needed, as I said, going to the Center for Academic Success, can, we can also connect students to the type of support um, that office um, will focus on time management, uh, as well as, as I said, connect to tutoring resources that are available for some of our courses. Um, but it really, there are, it's, there's a huge network of people to support your student. Uh, going to the academic advisor is also a good connector if it's feeling difficult for the student to reach out um, to professors at that time. You're halfway through your little run on questions, so take another sip. Will <laughs> SU have a summer term or on campus or remotely? We have not made the decision about modality for summer school yet. We will communicate that decision prior to registration for the spring semester, which occurs in mid-March. How about fine arts productions? Will they still be held outdoors this semester? How can my student try out or participate? Yes, so the theater department was mar uh, marvel marvelously innovative um, this fall and we had outdoor performances. Uh, they are um, still, they have planned their season around productions that can be socially distanced and outdoors. Uh, the chair of the theater department is Professor Desi Royball and I would encourage uh, the student to reach out to him uh, uh, to ask about how um, students can try out for those performances. What is the plan for the Research and Creative Works Symposium this spring? Will it be virtual? Uh, yes, we will be holding um, the Research and Creative Works uh, Symposium, Symposium virtually again this um, semester. Um, making a few adjustments um, from last year. We will not hold class on that day. 
Uh, and that is so faculty can encourage students to go uh, and uh, view the posters and presentation and make connections to their classes. So we're very excited uh, to be able to do that. It's, a, again, a real, um, I think, important aspect of our academic program. And Dean Gondor, we can tag team this. Are there opportunities for internships or service work this semester? Will it be virtual or in person? And yes, ish. And it depends on what the situation is. It depends on where the internship is. I encourage your student to connect with the Center for Career and Professional Development who can talk them through what things look like and what opportunities, opportunities exist. So yes, ish. Dean Gondor, do you wanna add anything? I think that's right. We, we're working with community partners as well as internship uh, uh, sites uh, and, uh, uh, and students uh, and um, asking students to follow the health and safety protocols of their sites if they are in person and we're looking into those health and safety protocols as well. If we are arriving on Monday, can we get the in-person testing on Wednesday instead of the individual home test for quicker results? I will say yes-ish to that. We are asking, Monday's a holiday, so you wouldn't be able to ship that test, that home test back until Tuesday. And then by Tuesday, the on-campus testing will be here on Wednesday. So just a reminder, normally that Wednesday testing is our surveillance testing. So they are not necessarily prepared to be our second round of intake testing. So we really wanna push Saturday. If you can't get here on Saturday, then we will work with you. What we're asking everyone to do is stay self-quarantined as best you can, whether you've gotten your test results back or not. We wanna make sure that we are controlling our Southwestern bubble as much as possible. So if you do move in on Monday, then we'd ask you to significantly limit your movement around campus. And then you would need to reach out to our health services office to make sure that we are working with you to get you scheduled for Wednesday. Uh, we'll go President Trombley for this. How can we as parents best support our students during this challenging semester? Well, I think you should start with sending the president cookies. Uh, and I will, no, no, no. Uh, you know, I, I went through that same thought process when my son was at school. And yes, I did send him cookies, but I also, uh, you know, it's a fine line because uh, you don't want your student to think that they're getting too much attention. Uh, but at the same time, you want your student to know how much you care and that you're thinking of them. So text, send notes. And, you know, there are great places where you can actually send packages of cupcakes or whatever special treat your student likes. Uh, and maybe arrange a regular time that you speak uh, every week. Uh, but do know that we care enormously about your student. And one of the real treats that I have is that uh, this coming semester, every Friday morning at 7.30, uh, all students are invited to come over to my house and we'll take a quick walk. And I always uh, bake treats for them the night before. We're also going to be having another round of the captain's sweet surprise. I uh, have no idea what the captain will be offering because no one will share it with me. But the captain will be here every week making sure that everyone has something sweet and that's actually one of the times that we all can socially distance, but, uh, but see each other while we're on campus and people seem to enjoy that. So your student knows that you care and uh, do what you know how to do best. Send notes, send cards, and uh, they will really appreciate it, I'm sure. Absolutely. On what day do dining services resume? That is this Friday, so just a couple of few days from now. President Trombley, is there a possibility that students will be able to get vaccinated at school this semester? I tend to think that that's, well, let me put it this way. I would love to see that happen. Uh, I would love to see uh, us be able to start that tomorrow. Uh, however, what I'm hearing from authorities, uh, both nationally as well as in the area, uh, that does not seem as though that's going to be happening within the next two or three months. 
but I would really appreciate being surprised. And if it was possible, you can bet that we would organize something absolutely as quickly as possible. Will there be needs assessments for remote students? Absolutely, we will be serving all students remote and in person. We wanna make sure all the needs are met. So yes to that. Will students be able to request a COVID test at any time, not just when selected for random testing? Anytime a student develops symptoms, we have an on-campus test that we want them to take. We, we're calling it the patch and they can get test results right away at the patch. So we, we would want them to be tested there. If they do not have symptoms, but just are wondering or think they might, then we will have them do that uh, at home test and get the results in hopefully about two days. Also, just as a, uh, to add on here, the Georgetown Public Library is offering free COVID tests. You just have to uh, call in advance and make an appointment. And you can now buy COVID tests on Amazon. Uh, it's amazing how quickly things are coming together in, in terms of that. Uh, so I think the, some of the struggles that we felt that we had early on in the fall semester, tests now are very readily available for everyone. Thank you for that. Uh, Dean Gonder, will you keep the virtual classrooms in the fall if we happen to be sick or can't make it in person? So we are asking um, uh, students to identify as remote and or in person and uh, stay in that modality consistently throughout the semester. We had a lot of students switching modality um, uh, day to day. This became challenging for faculty to um, monitor. What I would say is reach out to the faculty member in your class and ask them what their preference uh, would be. That if you, if you are sick and quarantining, we will have a remote path for students in that class. If you're unable to come to class that day, uh, the professor, uh, depending on how they've set up the hybrid model, um, would have advice of, about whether or not there is the option to participate virtually or not on, on days when you can't attend in person. My student did not have an on-campus job in the fall, but is interested in finding work this semester. How can they do that? Encourage them to reach out to the Center for Career and Professional Development. They're aware of all the jobs that are on campus. They're also aware of positions off campus and can be a great resource for your students. In the spirit of students reducing their exposure to COVID, <laughs> what are your favorite places to get to go food? That's a great question. Ooh. Gee. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I don't think I get to go food enough to know the answer to that. How about the newest person to, to Georgetown? What are your go-to places? I'm gonna go back to cake and cookies. Uh, there. <laughs> There are lots, lots of uh, places available for that. You know, Grubhub is a wonderful thing. And you can get lots and lots of things delivered here. And in fact, we had that happening quite a bit during the fall semester. And just about uh, all of the restaurants in the Georgetown area have grab and go. You can go and they will have uh, food prepared and ready for you to pick up. So I'm, I'm really happy to say this is, this is not a problem eating very, very well in Georgetown, including barbecue, which I highly recommend. And I have been in Georgetown longer than our students have been alive. And I can tell you that back in the day, there was no place to go. So we have come so far and it is a, there is a bounty of opportunity in, for dining in Georgetown. President Tromley, how do I join the Parents Leadership Council this semester? Just send me an email at laura at southwestern edu and you're in. Easy enough. Dean Gonder, will there be student faculty research opportunities this summer? There will. We have, uh, we ran our uh, SCOPE faculty student program as well as faculty student projects. Uh, virtually last summer. We hope to run them in person um, this summer, uh, but uh, are flexible and will respond to, to the environment. But uh, we have faculty who have made proposals and they've been approved. And so students should uh, reach out to the Office of Integrative Learning 
uh, if they're interested in the SCOPE program, uh, or talk to faculty members if they're interested in opportunities over the summer. I want to jump back to the employment question just for a second and recognize Randy who's behind the curtain. None of you ever see Randy, but he keeps us organized and live and does a fantastic job. And he sent a note that the AV department is looking for, for student workers. So if anyone has any interest in working with AV, reach out to CCPD or Randy and there you go. Right. For summer school at community colleges this year, will SU be accepting credits if the classes are remote as it did last year, Dean Gonder? Again, I think we will need to make that decision in curriculum committee and communicate that and we will communicate that out to students uh, at the time of uh, registration uh, in the spring for fall classes and summer classes. President Trombley, barring unexpected changes, will the students be able to stay on campus through final exams? That's currently the plan, uh, that they will be here. And also part of the plan is that we will be having not one, but two commencements uh, at the end of this year. Uh, all very safely done, all socially distanced, and uh, all very, very happy ones. So that is uh, our intention and the part of the plan right now. All right, President Trombley, can parents attend football games? As I said earlier, what we're doing is we're right now in conversation to develop protocols so that we could have a very small number of parents come to football games, the two that are going to be held uh, off campus. We're looking at the outdoor sports that would be held off campus and developing a means by which we would be able to make sure that everyone is abiding by uh, the very safest protocols that we develop. So more news on that later, but uh, I'm in lots of conversations with Jamie as well as Glenn Schwab, and I'm also speaking with the other presidents who are part of our um, two conferences. Does SU offer any summer employment opportunities for students? Yes, there are some offices who do hire for the summer. CCPD is a great resource for that and they can tell you more about it. Last summer was obviously different because we weren't on campus. We're hopeful that we will be around this summer and have some opportunities. So check in with CCPD. Is the Maybe Commons open all day for cer or certain hours for dining each day? They do have certain hours, however, they have expanded those hours and we got a lot of positive feedback in the fall on the expansion of those hours. So I think we're in a good place with meal service at this point in time. Dean Gonder, what portion of students are remote versus on campus? Do you know that? I have not gotten an update yet from um, Dave Seiler and Academic Success. Students who are remote are asked to reach out to him and make that request. Uh, that number fluctuated quite a bit in the fall. We had about, I, I think, 150 to 200, somewhere in that range of remote students in the fall. And there is someone that has been around Georgetown as long as I acknowledging that I'm telling you the truth about food back in the olden days. Absolutely true. Guess what panelists? Oh, I thought we reached the end, but we didn't. Uh, oh, that's great. Thank you. One of our colleagues has posted that we do have orientation leaders uh, positions that are going to be available this summer. And those are the students who peer educate and provide that connection between current students and incoming students, and it's a great way to um, be employed, have an impact on Southwestern and our incoming student population. So thank you, Jennifer Leach, for that. We have, did, we have done it, we have reached the end of the questions. I wanna give both of you the opportunity to share any thoughts you might have before we give people back 15 minutes. We'll start with Dean Gonder. <coughs> The campus is ready to have students back. It has been very, very quiet the last uh, few weeks. Um, we're, uh, uh, it was quite exciting for us to watch learning occur uh, in the fall. I think all of us 
uh, who were part of that. I taught a class in the fall, just found such comfort in being able to do some normal things, even if we had masks on the whole time during class. I, I feel like the bond that I created with that class is going to be stronger than any class I've had before. And uh, I think all professors uh, are, are super excited to have students back and get back to, to what we just really love. So we can't wait to see you. Well, two things I wanted to mention before we all go. And one, in terms of student involvement, we will be uh, sending out a request for proposals next fall for food providers. However, this spring, we will be surveying students and we will be asking students for feedback in terms of the kinds of food offerings and choices that they would like to see on campus. And I really recommend uh, your students taking part in that. And also, I have been working with my wonderful senior staff, as well as a very large group of faculty staff and students and trustees. And we are working on developing a five-year plan for the university's future. We are in the very happy circumstance that our plan has been very effective thus far, and we are looking at having a balanced budget by the end of the year, which uh, considering what has been transpiring over the last eight months is extremely positive and really, really good news. And that puts us in the position of being a bit ambitious about where we want to go over the next five years. That is something that is going to be going through uh, quite an extensive process to think about our priorities. And once that plan is approved by the trustees in April, that will be communicated with all of the members of our Southwestern community. And so I hope uh, that this is going to be the last semester, not that we don't enjoy seeing everyone. Uh, however, I really prefer seeing everyone in person. And uh, my fingers are crossed that this might be the last time uh, that we have such an unusual kind of semester. And in the fall, uh, we can go back to having everybody welcome you and your students on campus. And we can all be in the same room while we think about the future and the different ways in which Southwestern is changing our lives and your students' lives. So thank you for joining us this evening. I'll cross my fingers for that as well. I echo my colleagues. Thank you all so much for your partnership and your willingness to work with us as we go on this journey together. We look forward to a fantastic spring and an even better future. And again, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in real life. If there's anything we can do, please know we are all accessible and here for you. Thanks so much and have a great night. Bye. Bye.